Hey guys, it's AC on, and today we're back with more spoilers, and today we're looking at a few of the new green cards that we build. And first up, we're looking at Sport Silk Weeper, two in a green, creature spider, reach hexproof from blue. Whenever Spork Silk Weaver is dealt damage, gain one life, and create one green sapperling. This card's probably not gonna be seeing play in standard, probably more of an EDH casual card. It's definitely more defensive than it is aggressive. But the thing is you're playing green, so I don't know how controlly slash defending you can get with this card. So it might be in like a slime foot EDH deck as this creates sapperlings for you. Um, but it's nice anti-aggro piece in green, however. Next we have Drill Reel Wanvoli Recluse. This card I don't think is as good as it could have been. It doesn't really combo with itself. It requires a lot of setup, it's slow, and all in all, I don't think it's too strong of a card. However, it's a two drop, so you're playing this pretty early in EDH decks probably. In standard, this probably won't see any play. It's an easy shock target, and it costs six mana for its activation. So until end of turn, creatures you control have a base power of toughness X of X for X of number of cards in hand. This also requires you to have a large hand, which is reasonable for you to play this card. It's more of a build around me card. It's two and a green. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, you create a 2-2 cat token. So it thematically resembles the set. However, I don't think it's just a strong card at all. Next, we have Elder Gargaroth. Three green green creature beast vigilance reach trample. Whenever Galgroth Elder Gragroth <laughs> attacks or blocks, choose one. Create a 3 3 beast creature token, gain three life, or draw a card. This card is definitely going to be an EDH staple. It's got a lot of value. It doesn't have haste, but it doesn't mean you can't get immediate value. It definitely is a deterrent for EDH players or casual tabletop players. Um, gaining three life, probably not the best, best of, uh, use of this card. However, drawing a card or creating more board state with this card is definitely the best, especially when you're playing commander and you know there's a board wipe coming, you can just expand your board without having to spend any more resources on it. Or you can draw cards while everyone's sitting there attacking each other and they're not attacking you because they have a huge vigilance reach trampler. You swing into, you can swing with this and not have the repercussion of being blown back because it's got vigilance. Also, it can't be chump blocked as easy as well. Another upside is it's not a combat damage trigger, it's also an attacks or blocks trigger. So if you can get more than one combat, you can perhaps even abuse the ability and that you can maybe draw two cards if you have some sort of two combats this turn uh, combat trick or something like that. Or you can create six more power on the board. Uh, or if you're really in a pinch, you gain three life. But in the end, I feel like just creating a three three will gain you three life. And even more, maybe waste a removal spell or blow a removal spell from an opponent's hand. So all in all, I think this card is super good. Probably be played in Commander, maybe even Standard, because in Standard we had no hide, hide, uh, no hide, Ferox, and that wasn't played too much, I believe, because of the downside. This is one more mana, but also has a lot more upside. It's also a six six too, so it's above its cost. It's rather than a five mana five five, it's a five mana six six with a lot of upside. Definitely gonna be scary to play against the mono red player. Definitely a great card. Next up, we have our new favorite Planeswalker, Garrick Unleashed. Two green, green, green legendary Planeswalker. Plus one, up to one target creature gets plus three, plus three, and gains trample at the end of turn. Minus two, or minus one. Trade three, three, green beast creature token. Then, if an opponent controls more creatures on you, put a loyalty counter on Garrick Unleashed. Minus seven, get an emblem. At the beginning of your end step, you may search your library for a creature. Put it onto your battle onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. So the plus one isn't anything new, it's just another wild growth effect. Two plus three is very much a Garrick thing. The minus two, however, is super good. Looking at if you're behind and if you're playing a planeswalker and you're ahead, that's just a win more. But if you're behind and you're playing a planeswalker, you're getting twelve power worth of creatures out of this card. So it's a four mana twelve twelve. If you can if it lasts that long anyways. Not all in all, but that's generally pretty good. But if you're ahead, you're probably using plus one, plus one, getting that minus seven, but at that point, if you can keep plusing, plus, plusing Gaeric while you're ahead, you're probably going to win anyways. The minus 7 is just icing on the cake. If you're getting minus 7, hopefully you're winning, unless Garrick is like your top end and you're playing a pretty aggro deck. But if you're playing Garrick, you're probably going to play Mono Green Stompy. This card is just crazy. It's nothing too crazy, but just having a card like this on standard is going to be pretty fun, especially at that minus 7. It's going to be super worrying. Next up, we have Garrick's Harbinger. There's one and two green. X proof from black. Whenever Garrick's Harbinger deals comp damage to a player or planeswalker, look at that many cards on top card top of your library. May reveal a creature card or a Garrick planeswalker from them and put it into your hand. Put the rest into the, your library in any random order. Bottom of your library in random order. This card is super sweet. It has this sort of attack planeswalkers and get benefits from it. Questing beast effect, where if you see a planeswalker, you're not gonna feel bad to attack it despite playing a mono green stompy deck and wanting to go for face. Also, it has Hextrude from black, which is also, I believe, the single handed most strongest removal color? Could be wrong, but if that's the case, that just means this one's all the more stronger. 
And if you're playing this in standard, which you probably are, or you're playing in commander, you're probably going to be playing it a black deck since black decks are taking up most of the formats in regards to deck color. Uh, this is going to be pretty helpful and pretty resilient. The best thing going about this is, is that if you have a Garrick Planeswalker in your deck, or if you just have a, a lot of creatures in your deck and you're playing creatures, you're playing green, you're probably playing creatures, you just, you draw a card from attacking, which is probably the best thing you could do. This card will probably see play in standard, uh, definitely see play in EDH or casual formats. I don't think it'll see play in internal formats, however. It dies the bolt, it's too slow. Next up, we have a nice cool le red legendary, which is Sobira, Cav Reveneer of Tulziti, excuse me if I butchered that. Two in red, legendary creature, human shaman, with haste. For one generic, another creature with power two or less can't be blocked this turn. One red, tap, discard your hand. Until the turn, number creature power two or less you control, deals common damage to a player, draw a card. This card looks insane for mono red aggressive decks in EDH. Being able to have your creatures go up through and draw you cards, and you're playing mono red with a very low to the curve power two or less creatures, you're gonna be dumping your hand immediately. The only problem I have with this card is, it doesn't give them haste, so if they clear the board and don't have any creatures out for some time, you're probably going to be stuck behind, which kind of sucks. It also might be worth noting that behind any combat tricks that you have or giving this creature vigilant, you also won't be able to be drawing any cards off of her. So either you go and attack with her, or you wait and let her stay back, and then she calls the commands, and get your creatures in, and you draw a card from them. To me, I think Subria feels a lot like a goblin commander, or a commander that relies a lot on the combat abilities, and that they don't need to be given haste because she herself can't give her creatures haste, but also she can allow those creatures to get through because they can, can't be blocked using her ability. So she's very mana intensive, and so if you have a lot of mana artifacts, artifacts that give mana, and then you can attack freely and then draw cards from her ability, it seems like a great card. I can see her being used a lot like cards like Robert the Rich, or Grenzo Havoc Razor, or Carrie Zev. Actually, I think there's a, a whole slew of cards that can be used uh, legendary cards that can be used just for like combat abilities. Actually, one of the problems with my Grenzo deck was a lot of times I'd have to put a lot of swords on Grenzo in order for him to get through because a lot of times people would just block him and they couldn't do anything or else they would get a lot of tall creatures or later game slash mid game creatures and it would simply just stunt my board progression. Next up, we have Thieves Guild Enforcer for one black, Human Rogue. When Thieves Guild Enforcer or another rogue enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent mills two cards. As long as an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, Thieves Guild Enforcer gets plus two, plus one, and has Death Touch. This card by itself isn't too helpful. It's actually, I don't think, quite a very good card. For one mana, you have to cast this four times in order to get to its effect. So you have to have at least four other rogues in order that don't have a mill ability to get this effect, which is pretty weak. Uh, however, if you're playing like a mill strategy in Commander maybe, however, it's like you're only playing one of these. So if you're playing like a rogue, black rogue tribal or Rakdos rogue tribal, uh, maybe you're playing this. But at that point, it's like you could be playing other strategies which are a little more effective. However, if you want to, you know, be the black sheep, I guess you can play this. However, that concludes all our reviews for today, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this review. Uh, I really enjoyed some of these, especially the greens. Gosh, I have to make a green deck. And I can't wait to see what the new uh, legendary white creature is going to be that's not Mangar. Actually, no. It, 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 Mangar is the legendary white one in the cycle. I think it's it's the legendary blue one. Hopefully it's like a two drop, but maybe that may be too oppressive unless they do like a flying matter sort of strategy. Who knows? But until next time, guys.